Hi, my name is Brooke Owen, and today will be the first of many videos discussing the basics of playing oboe and continuing to play oboe successfully. Um, a little bit about myself, I have been playing oboe for 10 years under the direction of Dr. Laura Dahl, who is a professor at Georgia State University where I attend school. I'm currently a sophomore and my, um, my major is music education. So today we're going to be discussing the assembly of the oboe, um, the proper resting positions, and how to take care of your oboe after you're done playing. So to start off, your oboe case should look somewhat like this, pretty small. And what we're going to do, there are three joints. We're going to take the bell, which is the bottom joint. It's called a bell because it looks kind of like a bell. And we're going to take the joint with the key sticking over the top. This is the lower joint. What we're going to do is we're going to slowly twist together in a slight rotating motion until the joints are completely connected. So there should be no space between the bell and the lower joint. From there, we will take the last joint in the case, which is the upper joint. You can tell it's the upper joint because it has this little opening at the top where we're gonna put our reed. And with the oboe facing you, you're going to connect it and then on the left side, if you were to look at it, you want to line up what are called the bridge keys. So, on the left side, there will be keys right here that you must line up in order for the oboe to play correctly. After you've done this, you can then grab your reed and You can also, in the same way that we attach the joints, twist the reed in. This will make it easier. And when we take them out, you're also going to do a twisting motion. The reason we do the twist is because the cork, which is the inner part of the joints, this is the cork, it can easily be ripped or torn off if you put the oboe together too aggressively. So in order to prevent that and to prevent having to repair that in the future, just gentle twisting, attaching all the joints, and putting the reed in the reed well. So now that you've got your oboe assembled, we're going to go over prop proper resting positions. So let me readjust here. The most common resting position for the oboe is simply on your thigh. The reason that we put it here, it's soft for the bell, which is either going to be made out of plastic or wood, and we don't want to damage the bottom of the oboe. This also leaves a good presentation when your section all has their oboes on their leg. If you're resting for an especially long period of time, you can lay your oboe down in your lap. And you want to put it down with your keys facing upward so that, first off, you're not putting any weight on them. And second off, the oboe collects condensation while you're playing, and if you flip it over, water will get in your keys, and you will have a very gurgly sound. So just to avoid all those issues, keys up, laying across your lap. What band directors don't want to see from you, you setting your oboe on the ground, just letting it sit on the floor, that's not only disrespectful to the instrument, you look kind of lazy. Um, like I said, not on the keys. We don't want to do that. Um, some fun ones that I have seen before. Do not place your thumb rest and try to balance on the stand. You will drop your instrument and it will cost a lot of money to fix it. So having those resting positions in mind, there, the purpose of those two resting positions is to keep your oboe safe and to look like a professional player. For the next section, we're going to talk about 
deassembling the oboe and taking care of it after you've been playing for a while. So first, we take out our reed, which is the most delicate part of the instrument. We don't want anything to happen to this, especially if it's a good reed. So we're gonna set it on our stand or put it immediately in your reed case. And we're gonna go in backwards order, but first we have to swab out our instrument. If you just bought an oboe, they typically come with a swab, but if not, you are gonna wanna purchase one. It's just called an oboe swab. It can be found at Music and Arts, probably Guitar Center, or you can order it online. It has a silk part, which will absorb all the moisture, a weighted end so that you can put the string through the oboe, and a string to pull out so that the silk does not get stuck in your oboe. What you're going to want to do, turn your oboe upside down very carefully, put the weighted part through the bell, and thread it through. So this thread is sticking out the top, and the silk is out the bottom. Now you're going to slowly pull the silk through, not all the way through, because oftentimes if you try to pull the silk all the way through the top, it will get stuck in this reed well, and you'll have to get that repaired. The motto of this video is, if you don't do things correctly, <laughs> you're gonna have to get your oboe repaired. <laughs> so after you've done that, the string should still be sticking out the end. If it's not, you can reach up in the bell and search for it. And if you can't find it, if you've pulled the swab too far through, you can pull it apart and then pull it out. The most important thing is don't pull all the way through the top. Make sure that you pull back out through the bottom. So now that you've swabbed your oboe, made sure it's nice and dry. We're going to deassemble it. Go ahead and put your case in your lap. Open it so that the indents for the joints is at the bottom. And you're going to deassemble the opposite way that we assemble. You're going to take the head joint off very carefully, put it in its space, and then you're going to twist the, the bell and the lower joint apart slowly and carefully. Make sure that it's properly, it's properly in place. And then shut your case softly because let's say that the lower joint didn't get in its proper position so it's kind of sticking up. If you were to slam your case closed, you could harm your keys. Other than swabbing, other than swabbing, some good measures to keep your oboe clean and well adjusted is to get an adjustment every year just to make sure that your oboe is well adjusted for playing. So the oboe has lots of screws and springs that make it work. And oftentimes from a year of playing, they will get out of adjustment. Maybe your notes aren't coming out right. Maybe some of your notes are super flat for no reason. You probably need to get your oboe adjusted. You probably need to get your oboe. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, okay. You probably need to get your oboe adjusted. So you need to look up oboe repairman. This is important. You can't just go to music and arts <laughs> and say, hey, my oboe is not playing well. Can you look at it? Because they will have no idea what they're doing. You need to find a official oboe specialist who's gonna look at your instrument and clean it for you. Oftentimes this will be oiling the wood, taking the keys off, making sure all your pads are still sealing. And something you can do just for maintenance you can shine your keys with a simple um, polishing cloth. You can check the grains of your oboe if it's wood. If you see a crack, you need to go get it repaired. Um, but yes, frequent swabbing and a yearly adjustment should keep your oboe in great shape.
So today what we've reviewed is how to put the oboe together, the proper resting positions when you're not playing, and how to take care of your oboe so that it lives a long, happy life full of good playing. <laughs> um, I hope this was informative, and I will see you for the next video.